All right, in this video, I'm literally just gonna go through some of the comments. I first off wanna say thank you to everybody watching. Really appreciate you guys. You know, we're in here hustling, we're working our asses off. You know, really trying to bring value, as much value to, to you know everybody out there. So if you're getting any value, comment something in this video. We're gonna take it, we're gonna answer it. I'll even shout you out. Let's dive into the video here. All right, first things first, question from a comment. Realistically, how much, and this is from AAQ9, you have no name in your YouTube channel, but shout out to you. Realistically, how much should your marketing budget be if you're a startup agency? The answer to that is as much as you can possibly dump into marketing as you can possibly afford, especially if you know what to do with that marketing. Like if you give me a dollar, I know I could put it through my marketing machine and make it $2. If you don't know that yet, then you need to just test stuff. So I would start with just little tests in small batches. That's personally what I would do. And until I found something that was scalable, we found a great lead generation system. I'm not going to shout it out because you probably already know it by now and you probably hear me saying it a million times. So check out other videos and you can probably find out what I do for my marketing. It's pretty simple. But yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube even ads, um, just building organic content and putting that out there at scale. But as once you figure out something that's scalable, as much as you can afford and have the capacity to gen or work those leads, because like we're at the point now where I just need more people. So if you're looking for a job, let us know and you're a good salesperson, let us know because we will hire you and you can work these leads and make a ton of money and make a bunch of money in commissions and sales. That's what I would recommend for you. So the answer is as much as you can afford. All right, next question here from bmace2648. Shout out to you. Are you a captive agency? No, we are not a captive agency. We're an independent agency, independent brokerage. Uh, whatever you want to call it, but we're an independent insurance agency and we basically work with a bunch of different insurance carriers. We shop it around for comp different companies that we have direct appointments with and ultimately try to find the customer the best possible deal to sell them an insurance policy. Other than that, you know, we're pretty much same day in, day out operations as a captive agency, but no, we are independent. All right, next one here. This one's from Mike Handel Mayer. Shout out to you, Mike. Do you do surety bonds for contractors? Yes, absolutely. We do those all the time. Surety bonds, you know, performance bonds, there's bid bonds, uh, and just a standard contractor state bond that, that's required in California. Been bumped up to 25,000. A lot of contractors are not super happy about that, but in California, they're required to have the contractor's uh, bond, 25,000. They're pretty cheap, you know, 220 bucks, I think, for the year. If you buy it and you can buy it up to three years for the three year bond, you know, saves you the headache of having to reshop your bond every year. If you're a contractor, Mike, reach out to us. We'll give you a quote. We'll give you great service and we'll take good care of you. Next question here is from I am Mireya. Hi, Mireya. Thank you for commenting. Appreciate your support of the video. You said, great video. What other insurances do you do? You do? So we do mainly, these are the main focuses, is personal and commercial. So, you know, personal lines, home and auto, umbrellas, those kinds of things. Commercial side is the commercial auto. That's our a large focus. General liability is a big focus. Workers comp is a big focus for us. We do apartment buildings, commercial buildings. So commercial property, as you heard in the last one, we do even bonds for contractors those kinds of things. And then we do sell life insurance for our business owners. I think it's one of the great policies that we do sell. And I think it's one of the most important policies that um, any business owner should have to protect their families, especially because their company, you know, they're not working for a company that's offering life insurance. So we do pretty much from A to Z. The only thing we don't sell here is health insurance. A lot of people always ask us for health insurance quotes. We don't do health insurance. We refer that out to a health insurance broker who hooks us up, gives us a little commission split because you know I have that license, but personally didn't want to spread myself too thin and get into the health insurance world. Ask me about health insurance. I know nothing about it. I could not tell you <laughs> much about it. I, all I know is that I pay way too much for it every single month for myself. 
and it's it's very expensive. Yeah, that's that. All right, next one here from Aramaya Aramai Sonet. Shout out to you, Aramai Sonet. What could be a realistic operational budget to establish salary compensation? So we do uh, our compensation plan as a salary base pay to our producers plus commission. So that you know in California. Uh, there are some regulations and standards that you have to meet to meet in the California standards. Um, so I would just check your state salary, you know, base uh, salary requirement, minimum requirement. You could just pay them hourly and pay them the minimum hourly wage and then make it a, a good commission structure. We're big believers in incentivizing high on the commission on the front in the front end and the first year specifically we do not pay renewals. Um, which is how the agency makes money and we grow. We basically give away all the commissions on the front end to our producers, which helps the agency grow fast, but you do need to have those that money reserved in case they do sell a ton because you need to pay them their commissions. You do get it back from the carrier, obviously, but I would just factor in just as, as an idea, this is just a compensation plan and structure idea. You have to check, like I said, with a CPA and attorney to make sure you're in compliance with your state. 2,500 bucks a month per producer flat salary plus a compensation structure of let's just call it a ballpark of 10% commission on all new business. So if a producer is making 2,500 a month on their base pay plus 50,000 in premium that they, they write each month at 10% commission, they're making 7,500 bucks a month times 12. You're getting just close to a hundred thousand, almost a hundred thousand dollars, you know, just shy of a hundred thousand uh, dollars. But you know, your agency's growing. So, that's where you need to scale things and, and make sure you have the money and, and the renewal figures to cover salary pay for employees. So that's that. Okay, so next one. This one's from Sal, San Learn Informative Vlog. Thanks for the support, San Learn. Um, you, you said, hi, Chris. Do you train people to become brokers? I do, you know, consulting, obviously. Like I do the consulting stuff where I help people build their own agencies. I don't actually train people on products. If you do need help with that, I recommend going to like a training program. There's like the ICA, that's a great one. So Google ICA insurance training, like I would definitely check that out. Shout out to ICA, they helped me learn some stuff here and there. I did one of their, their courses for like, you know, whatever, it was like 16 weeks or something like that. That was great, learned a lot about, and they have live instructors where you can actually ask in-depth coverage questions, which is awesome really helps your expertise. I train my own team day in, day out. We have a good training program. That's a really important part of our process to onboard and build up team members. You obviously want your team and bro your agents and your team to know what they're doing, what they're selling. The more knowledge, knowledge is power, the more knowledge they have. So for sure, we do training of products, how we do things here in the office. That is for our internal team. But I mean, if you ever do need help, I'm more than happy to answer any questions about coverages and how they work. I do that in the consulting stuff too. So yeah, if you ever do need help, Sandler, hit me up. Happy to help you, man. Next question here is from Ines Capabel Trades. Great content, sir. Thank you so much. Just a quick question from someone who isn't in the industry. Why will a customer choose your company instead of working straight with the insurance company? That's a fantastic question, actually. This is basically <laughs> the whole reason we're in business is why would somebody not just go directly to the carrier and instead just work with us? So the answer to that is, there's, you know, there's no nothing stopping them from going directly to the carrier. Some of these carriers will write the policy directly and bypass us as agents. For example, Progressive, I think, is one of those. Um, we don't write Progressive, but whatever. The point I'm trying to make here is that, uh, you know, as a lot of these other companies, they don't actually have agents. They they choose to not have agents and basically pay agents commission so that they service the policies. You know, sell the policies are on the front lines of servicing and sell, selling the policies. So that's a cost that's not associated to them where they have to run payroll. They just pay commissions to um, instead of building their own internal, you know, agents within like State Farm or Farmers. Farmers and State Farm and Allstate, for example, they are their own product. They have their own agents. They sell their own product. They have, they have their own agents. Independent companies, they just use brokers. So we as brokers, you know, we not only are we servicing and selling and, and pro providing you know service to these products but we also have the capability of shopping around giving advice advising customers on coverages and if if let's just say a policy is it's getting canceled and what the carrier's underwriting says we're going to cancel you non-renew you they can come to us we can just take them to another carrier that's one of the beauties of part of being a broker you don't necessarily aren't tied to one company so the value that we bring is being able to shop around with different companies provide the best advice, you know, say, hey, 
here is company A, here's company B, here's company C. My recommendation, go with company A. It's the best quality carrier. It's the best, um, you know, pr coverage for you. And I would, I, I would buy this myself. I would sell this to my brother, my sister, my mom, whoever. And so that's the value we do bring as brokers. And, you know, instead of just going directly to the company and, and, and letting the customer figure out which coverages they really need, especially on the commercial side, this is where I think things are gonna get more complex. Um, and with you know AI and all these things, these carriers start might, might start implementing AI to bypass agents because the underwriting and the sales and all that stuff, they could just use AI to do that. Commercial is a little bit more complex and trickier. So the commercial business, it requires more guidance, more expertise. What kind of business are you operating? How much coverage do you really need for your business? So these are things that uh, a broker like me would bring value and I don't think we're gonna be replaced by AI just yet. Who knows, probably in the near future it will happen. It's just a matter of time. So that's that. All right, this one is from Tolu1778. What's up Tolu1778? Your question is, do insurance companies make profit if a private buyer or junkyard pays for a totaled car? Hmm, that's a good one actually, it's a little th tricky. I'm doing these on the fly by the way, so I just have to think about this for a second. To be honest, um, you know, your stated value or replacement cost is covered by your insurance company if you have uh, the right coverage and you have, you know, full coverage and all that stuff. If a junkyard, well, I, don't, I don't see why a private buyer or a junkyard would pay for the totaled vehicle. A lot of times the company will take the vehicle back and the value and then they just, I, I'm not sure exactly how they recoup their money but um, the company actually assumes ownership of the vehicle once, once it's totaled, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But yeah, I believe that's how the carriers may recoup some of their money in the event of a total loss that they paid out the claim. So that's a good question, honestly. Tolu, you stumped me there. I'm on the fly, so you got me on that one. All right, next one here is from uh, Brooke Bloomquist. Shout out to Brooke Bloomquist. Hi Chris, how do I find an agency to support me so I can establish my own life insurance company? Yeah, so as far as supporting you, what I would recommend is working for an agency. Um, life insurance is a little different the way they structure. A lot of these things are MLMs, you know, multi-level marketing companies. You join one of these MLMs, multi-level marketing, you know, life insurance agencies. And the first thing they do is get, they ask you to start calling all your friends, calling your mom, calling your 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 mom's friends and everybody in in your phone book to start set, trying to get them recruit them and sell life insurance to them. Not a big fan of that model personally. I'm not. I don't like that. It feels very kind of sleazy and scammy in my opinion. What I would do is work for a reputable insurance agency, maybe even like a State Farm. State Farm has fantastic life insurance products. They have a very you know they're very reputable. They'll teach you the right way to sell insurance with the value and really protect people versus let's recruit every person that you know and start posting these little things in my garage and little uh, seminars in my garage and we're gonna show you a Lamborghini parked outside and this is how you get your Lamborghini. You guys all, you guys gotta recruit three people. That's not the way to do it in my opinion. It's a, it's a black hole. Uh, you'll get sucked in and you're just gonna end up trying to sell people a false bag of goods. So definitely don't do that. Um, what I would recommend, yeah, go to a nice good company, a good insurance agency that you think is something that you would like to model. And then in the meantime, you know, if you wanted to start your own insurance agency for life insurance, there's a company called Back9. I think we have a link in my description where you can actually like sign up to Back9 using our code. You can, be, you can start selling their products. They help you get appointments with life insurance companies. It's super easy. I think this is probably the best life insurance platform. And don't just take it from me. Go check with other independent agents. A lot of agents use Back9 Insurance. It's a rating platform. They basically have all the carriers under the sun. So I'm just doing a really big promo here for Back9. But they basically have a, um, a list of, they have pretty much all the life and independent life insurance carriers. You could start selling this like tomorrow, literally, if you have a life insurance license. You don't really need to go join a company, but if you want the experience, you want the knowledge, that's what I would recommend. Like go work for a company, learn from a good agent who knows the products because they will not train you. They're not gonna teach, back nine's not gonna go and give you instructional, like how, how to, how to sell, how, this is how the product works. That's not what they do. They just simply give you the platform to sell. You can also, it's, it's a great platform. Go check it out. You can actually do quotes. Um, get a life insurance policy yourself. We'll put a link of our life insurance link below if you want to quote for life insurance, whole life, permanent, um, you know, term, even a, a accidental death. 
It's super easy. You can literally quote it and bind it yourself, which is great because then we make the commission and we didn't even have to make the sale. So that's why I'm promoting it. It's a great platform. Um, definitely check it out. Okay, this question is from Lasagna Lover 9. I love lasagna as well. More of a pasta guy, but you know, definitely good for a good lasagna. The question is, how do you become a broker? So you get the license, you get a license first, a PNC, property and casualty, or life and health license. Um, you need to get yourself a business entity license as well. So you need an LLC or a corporation so that you can actually get that registered with the Department of Insurance. And then you have an entity license number. That's your brokerage license. From there, you need to get appointments. Um, I make a bunch of videos on this, so go check out that video, how to get your own agency started. We'll link that somewhere in this right there. That's how you do that. You become a broker and then you can start to grow your agency. There's a bunch more that goes into it, but that's in a nutshell. Get your license, get appointments, establish a brand, get yourself out there and start selling some insurance. That's pretty much it. This one is for from Karina Lee, 2009. What's up Karina Lee? I hope you're still watching this. This comment was from six months ago, but um, how do we contact you for a consultation? Boom! ChrisCostantini.com. That is the link to our um, to the website if you want to book a call with me directly. I do those. I'm doing them half off, 50% off consulting calls in the month of September. So in September, we will do a promotion. We'll cut them in half, the price of the uh, consulting calls in half. Take advantage of it. I rarely do this. The goal is really to help more people out there. It's just tough to do that with the amount of meetings and stuff that I'm dealing with daily. Uh, to do also consulting calls because I try to give my 100%. I'm always like, honestly, those just to keep it real, like they get, they take the most out of me energy wise because I'm like trying to give, I feel a sense of responsibility to give you 100%, especially if you're paying for my time. I know you're trying to get your agency started and you want to get yourself going. I would feel terrible if you walked away from that, um, paying your, your money, especially start up, starting up. I know what it's like to be in those first stages. So every dollar counts. So it, it really wears on me if I don't feel 100% and I don't give you 100% value. So I usually don't even talk too much about like, you know, um, chit chat. I'm just like, let's dive into it. What can I do for you? How can I help you? So yeah, go to chriscostantini.com. I will give you my 100% effort to try to help you expedite your process, speed things up, start your own agency, make as many sales as you can make and, and get rich, buy the Lamborghini. Okay, this one is from user something something. They have no name in their um, profile. Can you provide hands-on house training? So I'm assuming you, you want um, hands-on training for home insurance. Like I said, you can book a consulting call with me. I can teach you actually how the products work. I can show you some of the policies we write. More than happy to do that. Like I said, there's probably better training platforms out there for coverages that are exist. I know enough to teach somebody. I teach people all the time, but if that's really what you want, by all means, hit me up. Next one here is from Anthony Maystas8876. What's up, Anthony? How's it going, man? Chris, what does your commission structure look like for your agents closing commercial accounts? All the commission structure is the exact same, whether it's personal or commercial, so there's no difference in the commercial or personal, but we have a tiered commission structure, so it goes from you know as low as 4% commission on new business this is ongoing and changing too, like we, we can update this at any time, but this is how it is right now in present day 2024. It goes from as low as 4% up to 15%. We'll pay you 15% commission as a producer making sales in my agency. If you do sell, so it's a threshold, there's like a bunch of tiers. It goes four, six, you know, nine, 11, 13, and 15%, depending on how many policies you sell. So the more policies you sell, the more commission you make. That's how we structure things. Um, it's the it's the best structure that I like. I think it's been great for us because it really incentivizes agents to make sales and work and act and be, have the high activity. If you don't sell policies, you don't make that much commission. The more policies you sell, you work your ass off, you work hard, you will make a lot of commission. Um, and there's an unlimited, there's an uncapped number on that. You can make as much as you want. That's one of the beauties of being in sales and insurance. That also, we do provide the leads and opportunities, so that's that's another great benefit. Good question, Anthony. All right, this one this one is from Timothy Dawson, 6144. What's up, Timothy? You sound familiar. I think we've spoken in the past. What's the commission like from the carriers? How does recruiting work? Oh, man, that's a good one. So how is it from the carriers? Different carriers pay different percentages on commission. So every carrier is slightly different. Most of our carriers pay us on average somewhere between 10 and 15% commission. 
So as you can see, if you, and then some pay more, some pay less. So that goes just in the, you know, like what I was just saying about the compensation. If we're only getting 10% and you make that 15% tier mark, we're losing money as the agency. The house is losing money, but you know, we're, that's like I said, we're incentivizing high on the growth and the sales. That's how that works. But every carrier is different. Usually non-standard carriers don't pay more than like 10%, which is unfortunate. We would love for them to pay more because they, they are uh, some of the larger accounts. The admitted companies that we have direct appointments with, those are the ones that pay us more commission and we make you know bonuses and stuff at the end of the year if the profitability is good and their customers aren't making a bunch of claims. So that's that. How does the recruiting work? Um, we are actively recruiting, running ads for people looking to be licensed agents and producers, specifically in California. So if you're in California or Texas actually, Texas and California, those are the two states we are operating in and we're hiring in. If you are in one of those states, feel free to reach out. We would be more than happy to um, chat with you and see if it's a good fit. So that's that. We also have a very kind of extensive on um, hiring process. So I do initial calls. We have an assessment. We do an interview. Those are all the things that we really, really want to make sure we're bringing on the right people into our team that are the right fit for us. Um, so we're it's just like leads. You want opportunities. You want people to talk to candidates that you, you want a big pool to choose from. So I would just say, get your name out there. If you're looking to recruit people and add agents to your office, you need to get a lot of exposure. People need to know that you're hiring so that you have the, a bigger pool, a better chance of hiring that A player that's going to, you know, first of all, make a great living for themselves, help grow your agency everybody wins and that's how the recruiting goes and having an onboarding a really good onboarding training program for them so that they get up to speed fast they follow processes and procedures in your office you don't just want them running wild and they don't get any training you really want to make sure people are dialed in they do things the right way they're following things you listen to their calls one-on-one -on -one training and coaching with them this all benefits obviously them um, but also helps the agency grow in the long run like you want top quality people so recruiting is a massive, massive part of the insurance agency game and growing your own agency. You need to have a good recruiting yeah, system in place and also onboarding and training and, and hiring process. That's huge. Great question, Timothy. This one is from Rocio Insurance Services. What's up, Rocio? Thanks for commenting and thank you for following. Hi, how much do you pay your agent's commission? Is it, is it a 50-50? I think I've already answered this in the last one of the last questions I went through here. But yeah, we pay um, a commission uh, up front and a base salary pay, so that's that. Sorry, Rusty, I wish I could have given you a better answer, but I already answered that one. Okay, Tom, this one's from Thomas Huh 399, 3919. How much do you offer for renewals? Good question, Thomas. We do not pay renewals in this office. That's why we pay a base pay or hourly pay to our producers, and we give a lot of the commission up front. There's no renewals. Some agents out there, they do offer renewals, and pay their agents renewals on the back end for years to come. They build their own little book of business and make their own splits 50-50 or whatever. We don't do that because it's, first of all, it's an accounting nightmare trying to pay producers renewals year after year, especially if you have a big team and a big book of business. It's already hard enough to track our own commissions. So being able to do that for a bunch of agents and track their renewals, it's just a nightmare. I would avoid that, so um, we do not pay renewals. This one's from a U L A U I finance. What's up? A U I finance. Hi, Chris. Uh, wondering where to see carriers as a new insurance company a agency. Good question. Yeah, there are definitely carriers out there that will appoint you off the bat. You don't need to go to an alliance or a cluster to get those appointments. I would definitely make a list of like the top carriers you want to be writing in general. Like if you already have an idea of what you want to sell personal or commercial, like which carriers are those first, those are going to be really tough to get off the bat. Um, so I would just recommend keeping your hopes low with those because they, they really require a new, a, an established agency to give out those appointments. They want to see a track record. They want to see some volume from your office, a profit, you know, loss ratio report. They want to see what your loss ratios are with other carriers to see if you're going to bring them profitable business. There's a bunch of other carriers out there that will appoint you, especially the G, the general agencies, MGAs, like, you know, just to name off a few, RPS, Burns and Wilcox, CRC, RT Specialty. The, just write those down and go look them up. You can get appointed with them. That's the non-standard business world. So it's all kind of tricky non-standard business that's not ideal to write. Like it's not the home and auto for 
you know, your neighborhood people. Um, but you can write other commercial business through them and then just look at their appetite guides. Um, there's other, some carriers, especially the newer companies that are aggressive in growth. I, I'm not going to name drop all the carriers right now, but those are the ones that will likely give you appointments off the bat or kind of like the more non-standard bad, com you know, auto companies. Those will give you appointments a lot easier. So I would shoot for those first. Get all those. This is my number one tip also. Always get all the appointments you can get on your own before you go and do an alliance because then they tie their you know, cut, they want their cut of everything. So go get those first, then go join an alliance and get the right carriers that you want. This one's from Max78747. What's up, Max? Is selling insurance a practical career? Be honest, is it a sustainable job? <laughs> I love you, Max. Good stuff. Yeah, you know, is it a sustainable career? I would say so, 100%. I think there's a bunch of industries out there that are uh, potentially, um, you know, at risk from the economic standpoint, um, you know, even real estate, like these are, this is probably one of the most sustainable, steady kind of uh, industries in my opinion. Um, I could be totally wrong and something could, the world could melt tomorrow and I could, it could just be a complete, um, completely wrong with what I'm saying right now. But yes, I would say it's a very stable industry. That's another reason why it's slow to really become successful. It takes five, six, seven, eight years to establish your agency and really start to make good money because it's it's a slow business. It's not something that you get massively rich overnight. Um, the first three years, I didn't really make much money at all. Um, we're in the sixth year now and I'm just starting to make decent money. I'm not, not even at the point really where I would love to be. It's, it's actually sad. I'm like, damn, why are we not bigger than we really are right now? But I would 100% say it's a very stable industry, especially I would just say commercial insurance is a great place to focus because that's one that, like I was saying earlier, AI and all these other new technologies, it's gonna take longer, I believe, to impact those and impact the commercial side of things before they replace us all with robots. Um, that requires more hands-on, it's a little more complex, it's gonna be harder to disrupt. So I would just say commercial insurance is great. Always diversify your book of business because you're, you know, any you know trucking industry could crash and it could cause a wipeout of your book if you're only focused on trucking insurance or restaurants, if you're only focused on restaurants, like that could, you know, you saw what happened in COVID, all the restaurants like shut down and all this different stuff. It could get affected. So it's just really important to also diversify, get, keep, don't put all your eggs in one basket. But overall, I would say it's been an amazing journey so far. Insurance is a very lucrative industry. You can make a ton of money. There's so much opportunity. That's another beauty. It's just the possibilities are endless. You can make as much or as little money as you really want, depending on how hard you work. So it takes a lot of work. It's a pain in the ass. A lot of times with customer service and all the other things that happen, but it's an extremely sustainable, I would say consistent, slow grind, very slow grind. Trust me, man. I'm starting to get gray hairs up in here. As you can probably see from my other videos, I'm starting to get gray hairs up in here. This one's from Burnell 1977. What's up Burnell? Awesome video. I wonder how many contracts or renewals a small agency needs per year to make a decent income. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty simple math. Burnell, you got to just get a book of business, get a million dollar book of business. You do, you know, 10 to 15% commission. You're making a hundred to 150,000 in net commissions. Obviously you got overhead expenses and payroll. If you already have a team. So yeah, you got to subtract that. Then you got to get to 2 million, 3 million, 4 million, 5 million, and so on and so forth. There's a bunch of agencies out there that are 10 million, 20 million, 30 million, $40 million book of business. They're making bank. So yeah, you need at least, I would just say, just to get you going, get to a million. It's, that was like the hardest thing for me was to break a million dollar premium, uh, book of business renewals coming in. That was a great moment and it's just been going up since. And that's another thing. It just keeps kind of stacking up year after year. So it takes a couple years, but once you get the thing rolling, you will be in a great spot. So it just comes down to <coughs> activity and sales. Okay. Next one here. This one's talk with Taurus. What's up talk with Taurus. What companies offer direct appoint direct carrier appointments? I can't, I don't know if I'm allowed to name these carriers off the bat. Um, but definitely, like I said, the non-standard carriers will give you appointments or non-standard MGAs will appoint your agency to write through them. Those ones are the easiest, highly recommend. And some of those smaller up and coming companies uh, that are not super big, like you can imagine like Liberty Mutual or Travelers Insurance, like these are the hard ones to get appointments with. 
So I would shoot for like, especially state by state, every state's a little different. You definitely wanna go and check those smaller ones out. So that's all the questions I'm gonna answer for now. Shoot some comments below. I hope this did bring some value for you. They're just going really quick, trying to answer them as fast and quickly as, as best as I could. Um, like I said, guys, really just trying to bring as much value as I possibly can. It's a tricky time in the insurance industry, but as, as always, really appreciate everyone following. You know, God bless you guys. Um, I really appreciate the support. Yeah, you guys keep me motivated with making these videos because uh, I see the comments and I know it's helping some people out there. I get some calls, like it's funny, I told my friend this the other day, I was like, at least once a week people will call and I actually do pick up my phone in my office and they'll be like, you know, people will call and they'll be like, hey, um, uh, I'll, I'll be like, hi, Delphi Insurance, this is Chris. And they'll be like, is this, is this Chris from the YouTube? And I'm like, yeah, this is Chris from the YouTube. Yeah, it is actually me. And then they'll be like, no way, this is, I can't believe you actually picked up the phone. Yeah, I do pick up the phone still here in my office. Um, especially like after hours when everyone's gone, I, I just pick up. I'm not encouraging people to blow up my office line because uh, we're, we're just trying to work and make sales for our own agency. So, um, but yeah, no, I mean also guys, if you do have like, if you're in other states and you don't know where to place risks or place business and it's in California or Texas, shoot it over to us. We, we appreciate all the referrals. That's like one favor I can ask of anyone out there. If they do have business that they can't write or they do have people in California, send it over to us. We would really appreciate it. I'll definitely also send you like a little gift as a thank you. So really appreciate that guys. Um, yeah, hit me up if there's anything I can do to help you. Follow on Instagram so you can keep up with my day to day. That's usually where I post all my stuff. And I answer DMs on Instagram always with voice memos to try to give you um, quick questions. If you do have more in-depth stuff, hit me up, consulting calls, that's the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, Instagram, probably the best way to get a hold of me. So really appreciate you guys. As always, we'll see you at the top. I hope you're on the way to the top now. And that's all I got. We'll see you guys soon. Peace.